Welcome back to Doubting Truth, Justice, and the American Way with Carnades.org. Today we're going to continue our Veterans Day special on war and peace through the vision of just war theory with the post-bellum part of just war theory. So we already taken a look at just ad bellum, just in bello. Now we're going to look at just post-bellum. That is going to be justice when ending wars and finding a happy and successful conclusion to a war. And hopefully instituting laws and policies that prevent the war from happening again in the future. Just like the first two, this is going to have a set of criteria that we have to meet in order for it to be just. So, first of all, proportionality and publicity. The settlement should be public and it shouldn't be about revenge. It should be about being proportional to whatever the crimes that were originally committed were, and it shouldn't be about just being really nasty to someone who you've been fighting for a while. Rights vindication. Most importantly, the crimes that triggered the just war should be remedied. It doesn't make any sense for us to fight this whole long war, the good guys to win, and then not to fix the original problem. Whatever the problem was, it should be fixed or remedied. Discrimination. Civilians should be punished for the acts of their government. Basically, socioeconomic sanctions are not allowed. Things like taxes that go directly to the winning side, they're things that are generally not allowed in a just war, because it wasn't the people's fault, it was the government's fault. Punishment, on the other hand, should be meted out for the leaders, specifically, that endorsed any war crimes, and fair punishment should also be meted out to soldiers that committed war crimes on both sides of the conflict. So even if the victors committed war crimes, they need to be punished as well. Compensation. Financial restitution is okay from the government, but a tax on the civilians is not allowed. And it's important to realize that if one leaves a government completely destitute, one's not going to be likely to have good relations with that government in the future, and it's probable that that government's going to start another war. And finally, rehabilitation. Transformation of the aggressor regime, demilitarization, human rights education, and so on and so forth. This is a really important but also really controversial piece of the post-bellum just war. Basically, we're saying that if there was a problem with the original government, we need to change that government, and we need to fix it. We need to make it so this isn't going to happen again. A lot of times, there's a lot of pushback from the losing country because they don't want someone to go in and change their government. But it's also really important to prevent wars from happening in the future. Things like demilitarization and human rights education, especially. The problem, of course, with all of these post-bellum pieces is that history is always written by the victors, and whoever wins the war generally gets to decide what was a war crime, what isn't, what kind of punishment is deserved, and what punishment isn't, because they've won the war. They hold all the cards, and it's pretty tough for the other side to object unless you have a really nice and objective international community. One can hope we have that someday, but until then, history is going to be written by the victors, and it seems to me that all is fair in love and war, so long as you win. Watch this video and more at Cardiades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.